How can we have the strongest economy in the world without the best infrastructure in the world? Donald Trump promised Infrastructure Week every week for four years, and he never built a damn thing. Dark Brandon came to the DNC, and he did not hold back. MAGA Republicans found out the power of women in 2022. And Donald Trump is going to find out the power of women in 2024. Watch. President Joe Biden took the stage at the DNC and received a thunderous and sustained standing ovation for over four minutes. <laughs> The noise when President Biden took the stage, the 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 love in the room, the enthusiasm, the wistfulness, the 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 just the crowd wanting to demonstrate to this man that he is beloved was not like anything. I've been to many conventions. It is not like anything I have ever seen in American politics. To the rafters, we love you, Joe. It was deafening. The crowd chanted, we love you, Joe, and thank you, Joe, and Biden responded with, I love you, and thank you, Kamala, too. But look, oh. thank you, Kamala, too. This is the kind of acknowledgement that you would never get from Donald Trump. I mean, the guy wouldn't even acknowledge his own daughter Tiffany at the RNC, just flat out ignored her. And you definitely would not see Trump embrace his VP the way that Biden and Harris do. Primarily because Donald Trump is a selfish brat who is void of empathy. But also because he incited his supporters to storm the Capitol and try to kill his former vice president, Mike Pence. J.D. Vance, do you understand why there was a sudden job opening for running mate on the GOP ticket? The they tried to kill your predecessor. Awkward. Unlike Donald Trump, President Biden is a true patriot. He's an extraordinary man who served our country and invested in its future. Her story represents the best American story. And like many of our best presidents, she was also vice president. That's a joke. Oh, and I just want to point out that it's well past midnight at this point and Biden is still crushing it with a full, energized, pro-democracy crowd. In contrast to Trump, President Biden believes in our country. He dedicated his entire life to serving it and always gave it his best. The song is called American Anthem. There's one verse that stands out, and I can't sing worth a damn, so I'm not going to try. <laughs> I'll just quote it. The work and prayers of centuries have brought us to this day. What shall our legacy, our legacy be? What will our children say? Let me know in my heart when my days are through. America, America, I gave my best to you. mistakes in my career, but I gave my best to you. For 50 years, like many of you, I've given my heart and soul to our nation, and I've been blessed a million times in return for the support of the American people. And as a love letter to America, here's a heartfelt video from President Biden. I was lucky I have a really close family growing up in Scranton, Pennsylvania. My dad taught us, when you get knocked down, just get up. You got to get up. 
So when cold shut down, Scranton, we moved back to Delaware where my dad had been raised. When I was in high school and college, I got interested in the civil rights movement. A lot of young African-Americans being arrested in my city at the time, and they couldn't afford counsel. So when I passed the bar, I remember walking over to the public defender's office asking for a job. They said, are you serious? You want this job? And so I took the job as a part-time public defender. Delaware Democrats couldn't get anybody else to run for the Senate. So they asked me to. I said, I'm not even old enough. I was 29 years old. It doesn't say you have to be 30 to be elected. It just says you have to be 30 to be sworn in. My sister managed my campaign. Not a single major office is held by a Democrat in the entire state. Hi, how are you? Hi, Joe how are Biden's you? my name. But we just campaigned relentlessly. Look, if you like it, you see, help me out. If not, vote for the other fellow. Look me over if you would. And we won. When I first met him, he had gone through a loss. My mom, Nelia, and my sister, Naomi, were killed. One of my earliest memories was being hospitalized for weeks. My dad always at our side. He was sworn in in the hospital at my bedside. So help you God. I do. No man deserves one great love, let alone two. His strength and his resilience drew me into him. We never had to wonder about whether or not family was important. And so there's a real tight bond. Joe would commute every day to Washington by train. Roughly 200 miles a day, every single day, just to be home with my kids. You've all had a chance, I hope, to meet my family. Uh, I'm trying to tell me to go, baby. Through personal triumphs and tragedies. 17, excuse me, 1983. My entire family. We found purpose in public life. Joe Biden was one of the most impassioned orders in the Senate. Damn it, we have favorites in South Africa. The favorites in South Africa are the people who are being repressed by that ugly white regime. He would go to the floor of the Senate and just let loose. We have favorites. Our loyalty is not to South Africa, it's to South Africans. He supported what we did to stop the slaughter in Bosnia and in Kosovo. This, as then in my view, is a fascist thuggery on the march where... It wasn't a big issue in America, but in terms of human decency, it was really important. He's most proud of the Violence Against Women Act. I admire your ability to share uh, what you went through. I can only guess how, uh, how, uh, how painful that is. He just tells things like it is. I've been obviously somewhat outspoken. I want to tell you how it made me feel. These people are being crushed. I may be resigning from the Senate today, but I will always be a Senate man. I didn't want to be vice president. Barack asked me and I told him, no, I didn't want to do it. But he said, well, go home and talk it over with your family. My mother said, uh, let me get this straight. First black man has a chance to be president of the United States, says he needs you, and you said no. To Joe Biden. You were the first decision I made as a nominee, and it was the best. I think I was able to fill a couple gaps, particularly my ability to deal with the Congress. How are you? And maybe my background in foreign policy. So it was a good partnership. I wish you liked better. These or these? Joe, they're the same. One last chance to... <laughs> Talk about our bromance. <laughs> this is an extraordinary man with an extraordinary career in public service. I am pleased to award our nation's highest civilian honor, the Presidential Medal of Freedom. With distinction to my brother, 
Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. After Joe was vice president, we thought our public service was finished. When we lost my son, Bo, I didn't want any part of running for anything. But then those folks came out of the woods in Charlottesville. I knew what Bo wanted me to do. Folks, the people of this nation have spoken. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. Thank President. You. When we came into office, we immediately got to work. Our work began with getting COVID under control. We passed the American Rescue Plan. We gave Medicare the power to negotiate lower prices on prescription drugs. Yo, it's now law. We got it done. A once in a generation investment in infrastructure. Yeah. The largest jobs plan since World War II. Thank you. Thank you. Leading the fight to protect women's reproductive health. I signed the most significant gun safety law in nearly 30 years. Save my lives. The country's biggest investment in climate ever. We've already cut the federal deficit, reduced the burden of student debt. More jobs. It's now the law. <laughs> How do you balance keeping the commitments you made in the campaign and dealing with the incoming fire? There's always something that happens that nobody asks you about in the election. The Russian military has begun a brutal assault on the people of Ukraine. President Biden has taken aggressive steps to help Ukraine survive Russia's assault. I'm very proud of rebuilding Europe and NATO. The United States and I, as president, champion a vision for our world grounded in the values of democracy. If we don't lead the world, who does? I am so proud to be vice president to President Joe Biden. We've got a lot of good stuff going. He's been making some of the most difficult decisions of any human being on Earth. Hey, guys, good to see you. But he has an ability to think about how the American people will be affected. People don't understand how damn hard you work. Hey, man, how are you? He is one of my most favorite people. I think we've got I think we have <laughs> He has a bold vision. Not only a vision, but a vision realized. The first black woman to the United States Supreme Court. The Border Patrol Union has endorsed this bill. The Federal Chamber of Commerce is, in, yeah, yeah. You're saying, oh, look at the facts. He'll go up to the last minute of the last hour of the last day fighting for what he believes. Wall Street didn't build the country. The middle class built the country. He wakes up every day trying to make the lives of Americans better. We take care of our own, wherever this flag's flown. Because of his own personal experiences, Joe was able to empathize with somebody who has been through a terrible situation. Today, we're bringing home three American citizens and one American green card holder, imprisoned unjustly in Russia. President Biden's decision to withdraw as the Democratic nominee was one of the purest acts of patriotism I've seen in my life. Biden decided the best way forward is to pass the torch to a new generation. I want to bring greetings from our incredible President Joe Biden. It was the greatest honor of my life to sit behind that resolute desk to be president of the United States of America. But I care more about my country than I do about my remaining behind that desk. 
Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for your lifetime of service and taking care of us when we needed you the most. Well, that's all for me today. Thanks for tuning in and feel free to follow me at I am Gabe Sanchez. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to check out the audio version of What Was That? Perfect for when you're on the go or just relaxing. Catch every episode wherever you listen to podcasts. So until next episode, I'm Gabe Sanchez and this has been What Was That? <laughs> <laughs>